All right. So we. So I should click continue. Yep. Go ahead. There we go. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. It is so wonderful full to be back with you for book talk tonight and i'm excited to introduce you to my friend kelly urban we both write for harper collins uh, but while i have written world war ii and romantic suspense kelly writes romantic suspense and amish fiction and so we're going to talk first about her romantic suspense novel and then we'll talk about writing in two genres and about her amish novel that's coming out in a couple of weeks um, mm -hmm. so she's doing both at the same time right now. But Kelly, do you want to take a moment and introduce yourself to those who are joining us? Well, I'm Kelly Irvin, and I'm thrilled to be here. Um, uh, as Kara said, I am with uh, HarperCollins, and I've been writing fiction for about, oh gosh, 12 or 13 years now. I was a newspaper reporter and then in public relations. and. Um, I always wanted to write fiction. I knew that's what I was going to do, but I woke up on my 45th birthday and said, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. And so I did uh, write a, a novel and I, I got some really good advice from uh, an ACFW member, Diane Mills, at a conference who told me to join ACFW, to go to conferences and to, to get a, into a critique group. And those three things I did, and they resulted in eventually getting an agent and a contract. So that it is, was a long haul, yeah. but it was um, just a, an incredible journey. That's so fun. And that's um, very similar to my journey too. You know, it was ACFW, you know, getting mm -hmm. involved in American Christian fiction writers, and then also the critique groups and learning what it takes to craft a story, um, but then also just the reading and reading and reading. Absolutely. And so all of those are just so, so important. Um, and you've been able to do it quite successfully now because you've got... <laughs> over 30 books out when you put them all together. Yes, uh, I've, it's just a, a blessing. I never uh, anticipated that it would be, um, that that would happen, you know, you, it, you yeah. hope. Um, I was very, very blessed to have uh, Mary Sue Seymour as, as my uh, uh, agent um, and she uh, was the one who encouraged me to write Amish romances and she really uh, said, you, you can do this. And she uh, sold the first one before I finished writing it. Uh, and so then I was like, well, I guess I really am gonna have to do this. And uh, it, it, you know, it just took off from there. I, I just, um, like I said, I just consider myself extremely blessed. That is so wonderful. And it's, um, it, your journey again, is a lot like mine in that you know, the first book gets published and that's not how everybody experiences yeah. publishing often you know it's seven to nine years or seven to ten years yeah. of working and submitting and um you know just trying and trying and trying what do you think it was that set that first book of yours apart so that you could kind of come right out of the yeah. well it, it, well i do just to clarify i did have a couple of romantic suspense novels that sold um prior to that but the amish book was the first one in the christian fiction market um, and so that um, for that door to open was just huge. Um, and and I, I think it had to do with the, it was a story about forgiveness and how difficult and, you know, I, that was one of the things that really attracted me to studying the Amish faith uh, because, you know, as Christians, we talk a lot about forgiveness, but the Amish are, of course, you know, that's something that we all know about them. And there, there have been some instances where they've just been incredibly forgiving um, of the outside world. And uh, so that prompted that first story. And I think it just resonated um, with the editor who, who was reading it and she wanted more of it. And Mary Sue was like, you need to write faster. She wants to read the rest of it. And so, um, yeah, it, it was a, an unusual situation. Yeah, well, and I think you really um, were kind of at that beginning, the vanguard of the start of Amish, you know, and so I think that kind of positioned you in a unique way. But what was it that attracted you to that Amish, you know, is that forgiveness, it's the way they 
they handle situations that a lot of us are like, wow, I, I don't yeah. know. Well, I, I have a tremendous respect for how work, how hard they work and uh, for their um, their adherence to the gospel. Um, and that is, you know, it's the bedrock of their faith and to, it's, it's really hard for us to understand that are out in the mainstream world, that idea that you are not the center of the universe. You are not the most important person uh, giving up, they call it dying to themselves, giving up to, um, to the greater good. And uh, I just, I have a lot of respect for that. I don't, I think there are some folks who say, oh, it just, it would just be so cool. They, they garden and they, they can and they yeah. quill and they farm and they're close to the land. And I think, yeah, but they do it in a way that is incredibly hard um, with, I don't think we can imagine with no electricity and no um, cars and there's no air conditioning, it's just a, a, a very, very hard life. Um, and, and so I just, I respect that what, while not idolizing it. <laughs> yeah, well, and I think that, you know, it's one of those things I've often thought about, you know, cause I wrote World War II and in my mind, that was kind of this going back to a simpler time. And I think that's one of the appeals of Amish novels is that idea of none of us really wants to live without electricity. I love right. my running water. I, I really enjoy being able to do things like this because of the internet and exactly. uh, all of those, you know, modern advances, but at the same time, it makes life really, really complicated. And I think there's something in all of us that kind of yearns for that slower the pace simplicity. that getting back to nature. And mm -hmm. so I, th I think that along with the simplicity is just yeah. really something that makes it pretty compelling. Is that what you see when you're interacting with readers? Yes. Um, I, and I, I, it's the idea that um, it's simpler and there, it's in some ways less stressful and it's very family oriented. They, <laughs> they, they are communities where everybody knows each other. They keep their communities small. Um, and so it's a time that it's just, you know, we live so far frequently, um, our families are so spread out. And so we don't have that closeness that, that I think readers uh, yearn for and, and see in the stories. And, and, you know, and of course the romances and, you know, they're losing yourself in a romance is something that I think a lot of people really have enjoyed um, especially during the last uh, year and a half or, you know, the time yes. that people have just been, the life has just been so stressful that that escape, uh, I think, has really yeah. appealed to people. Well, and I think there's also something to all the traveling we can do in books. And so we've got people from literally all over. It's so fun to see you from Kentucky and West Virginia and uh, Mary and Linda and all y'all. So thanks for joining us. But I think, you know, there's also something to our world has gotten very small in some ways the last year right. and a half. Um, and so being able to travel, which is one of the reasons I've enjoyed reading your romantic suspense because they're set yeah. in one of my favorite cities in the United <laughs> States, San Antonio. And I want you to hold up your book um, for just a moment because Lethal Intent, which is my romantic suspense novel, and then Her I Every my Move. Mind's reversed. <laughs> yeah, it's showing up fine. Her Every Move from Kelly, they're both on ebook sale right now. So mm -hmm. it's a great time if you haven't picked them up and read them yet, or if you haven't tried our romantic suspense, this is a great time to do it. Um, but Her Every Move is set in San Antonio. Yes. And talk about totally different from an oh, obvious setting. So why do you like to write your romantic suspense novels in San Antonio? Oh gosh, I have, I, I always, wanted, I love to read, first of all, I love to read mysteries and suspense. Um, and I always want a dash of romance in my mysteries. I want, I, my, all my stories are character driven. And that's true in the romantic suspense as well as the Amish romances that, um, but San Antonio is such an incredible place that it's so rich in uh, history and culturally diverse and it just makes a great place to write, uh, to set a story uh, and particularly uh, uh, suspense, uh, mysteries, uh, because it's so, 
uh, so diverse. Are there, and, and people recognize the landscapes. There are so many iconic uh, landmarks here and people who have either who either live here or who have visited it's a just a, a destination that so many people have visited and so they recognize the river walk and the alamo and uh, la villita um, we were talking earlier about la villita is a, um, the setting for the next uh, book which will be out next year um, and her every move, um, the, the focus of the story is the library, which tourists may not have seen, but if they've been in the downtown area, they probably saw it and didn't know what it was because it's just an incredible, looks like a piece of art. Um, and it, it's uh, very iconic. My kids call it the red enchilada library when they were growing up uh, because it has a very unique color. Um, and so those things uh, people recognize when they read the stories, and I think readers love that when they when they it's familiar to them. Um, it's so, uh, and and it's my adopted hometown. I'm actually from Kansas, um, but I've lived in San Antonio for um, gosh more than 25 years, and so my, both my kids were born here. Um, and so it's you know it's just a city that I love, and I love putting my stories in it. Well, and we, as we were talking about it, my first experience in San Antonio was when I was 12. My dad was there for training at Fort Sam Houston. And we were there actually when the Challenger exploded. And so, you know, I, I'll never forget watching the footage at the Kmart mm -hmm. because we were at the Botanical Gardens um, oh, and yeah. La Villita. And, you know, every time I'm in San Antonio, I want to go back to La Villita to the scent chip place because mm -hmm. it's just the aroma and getting to pick out and make your own kind of potpourri. But at the same time, Allison Pittman's on here uh, watching. And when I came for um, a writer's retreat that was in the mm -hmm. Hill Country, she picked me up at the airport. And my whole frame of reference for San Antonio was that downtown, the Alamo, mm -hmm. the Riverwalk, and all of that. And we're driving. And we're driving. <laughs> and we're driving and we're still in the city. And I'm like, I had no idea it was this big. And so I, I think it really does as a setting, give you the opportunity to drop in those familiar places that tourists know, but then also mm -hmm. satisfy those who are from the area or have lived there because it's right. just, there's so much there. And so that makes it really fun. Yeah, and to kind of I, I enjoy, yeah, I enjoy being able to talk about getting Whataburgers and, and um, picking up uh, Bill Miller's barbecue and sweet tea. And, um, and, and it, it's, I think that people are, sometimes my characters don't live in the inner city, often they don't. And, and people don't realize that San Antonio is really a sprawling uh, city. It, it, um, I, as I had said before, it's 1.3 million uh, people. And it, so it's, it's enormous. Uh, and, that uh, create, it creates a, a pressure cooker situation sometimes that really lends itself to the suspense and the, you know, all of the, the tensions that can happen in a city with so, with, with so much um, going on with so many different factions at work. And, and of course, you know, a city that big is going to have certain elements, uh, crime elements that are going to unfortunately lend themselves to some of the storylines that, that occur in, in, in uh, romantic suspense. Yeah, and that's always one of the challenges when you're writing about a real location yeah. is, especially with its suspense, I mean, we're creating chaos. That's what we're yeah. doing. And so then it's that tension of you're writing about a place that people know that they live, and then you're destroying buildings that they might know yeah. or you know things like that where they're like wait a minute <laughs> well yeah I, I felt the necessity to to kind of apologize in my author's note saying you know this is really a wonderful place to visit let me <laughs> Tell you this is a figment of my imagination people <laughs> so, it's fiction <laughs> it's fiction <laughs> yeah that's great so you write these romantic suspense, which I love. They're, they're just perfect. If you love romantic suspense, then, and you haven't tried Kelly's, then you definitely need to. And her every move is a great one to start with because they really kind of are standalones. They're loosely connected, right. but they're very much, you can just pick anyone up and read right. it. But then you also write these Amish. And what is it like trying to balance writing two genres at the same time? It's, um... 
it, it, I, I enjoy it very much. I, I love the uh, being able to do two things that are so totally different. I think as a writer, it really helps me stretch and grow and breathe. Um, you, you know, that was, uh, I think writing in two genres uh, forces you to think very differently about uh, stories, story uh, structure and writing. Um, and they're so different in the, the, the world that you're creating is so very different. Uh, and so I like the freedom that I have in the romantic suspense to use brand names and, you know, cars. And, you know, my characters will know what kind of car that is and um, will know more of those details. Uh, whereas someone who's grown up in the Amish world is not going to necessarily call these things by name um, and the vocabulary is so very different and um, you know it's it's it can be challenging but I think it's really really good for me as a, a writer to have those different worlds to live in and you know and have those character uh, Amish romances um, are, are I would say a little bit easier for me because with romantic suspense I have to build that those clues I'm a, I'm a what we would call a seat of the pants writer yeah. so I don't outline um, okay. and when you do and that's that with suspense yes it is we you know, and dropping those clues and making sure that things get solved in a way that makes sense is much much more difficult when you don't outline um, and I have tried doing it and I outline it and I can't so um, it's the the romantic or the romances the straight romances are more organic for me and that the story just comes along and I'm always surprised at, at what things may develop and what may happen with those characters but I don't have those huge holes that I have to go back and fill yeah. <laughs> that well, I do with the yeah, it's, it, it's fun as I'm just re reading through the comments and, you know, Lucy loves both of your genres and Mary mm -hmm. is saying the same thing, you know, she loves that you write in multiple genres um, and both of them are like, you do it beautifully and it's not well, easy to write you. one genre with you. <laughs> Let that's alone. Good to hear. Yeah, and that's one of the things that's kind of fun is when you're like, oh, okay, people really do think I'm doing both well and I can remember like one of them when I'm actively writing in two different genres, I will often have different music. So World War oh, II yeah. music when I'm writing the World War II. And then usually I would use country or like movie soundtracks that are more current. So that my brain, it was like a, a way to signal to my brain, okay, we're switching from this story world to that story world. Oh, yeah. um, and so do you have any like tips like that that you use when you're in the middle of writing or are you able to kind of fully write one book and then switch and fully write the other genre? Um, yeah, you know what? Um, that's the thing that for, for me, writing fiction, the stories are just sort of happening in my head. And I actually don't listen to music when I'm writing. I, I prefer just silence. Um, I, I, it's hard for me to explain that um, whatever that story is, once it's, once it's going in my head, um, you see these twists and turns, and, and people show up. And I'm like, where did that guy, where did that guy come from? You know, um, and so it's there's no. Um, it's it, that is true in both genres. It, it's uh, surprising to me frequently what will what will happen with these folks once they get started. Um, I'm. Uh, if I try to push it, 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 it tends to, to shut down. And so I just have to, you know, if I'm having a day where nothing's happening, I really have to let that go and just, you know, go wash dishes or take a shower or something. And then, and it's always so annoying because it's when I go to bed, <laughs> you know, I'd lay down and then all of a sudden there'd be all this stuff going on. And then I've got to get up and, you know, put a note in my phone about it. So I, cause I know I won't remember <laughs> that tomorrow I need to think about this because this is where this is going. Um, and it's, it's amazing to me what's going on in your brain when, when you're not thinking about something you think yeah. you're not thinking about it giving yourself that space to let the to subconscious just work on it is so important um and 
Lucy says that every time she reads one of your books, it becomes one of her favorites and Susan. Oh. Reads. So oh, thank you. That's Lucy. A great time. Yeah. Yes. So Anastasia wants to know, what do you love most about writing? Oh, I, it's just the most, when it's, it's going well. It is just the most wonderful thing. I can't imagine not writing. I can't. I. I it's just. I love uh, sitting down and start. You know, writing, having these characters come to life, um, and just the conversations that they have and the dialogue that occurs. For me, that is just. Uh, it just brings me joy. Um, every aspect. You know it. It, it's not always easy, but I can't imagine not doing it. That's awesome. It sounds like you just love the discovery part of the process. So I, I, I do. Linda has a question uh, related more to your Amish books. Do you have an Amish family that you consult with or how do you make sure you're getting those details right? Um, I don't have a specific Amish family. I wish I did, but I, my, um, I, a lot of it is in the research. I have visited each of the communities that I've, I, I, I tend to move my series. I've had one in Bee County, Texas, one in Jamesport, Missouri, um, another series that was in uh, Montana and three small communities in Northwestern Montana. So I've gone to each one of those places. The one I'm writing down now is in uh, uh, this one, uh, Love's Dwelling that comes out uh, July 6th is set in Yoder in Haven, Kansas. I'm, you know, I'm from Kansas, not far from there. Um, and so I have to go to those places and see the setting. And I was very fortunate when I went to Montana, I did get to talk to some of the Amish uh, folks that were in that area at the time. Uh, these, these stories in Montana were uh, um, about the aftermath of the wildfires that affected the Amish communities up there. So research is really uh, what has been critical for me for each one of those is going there. Uh, I went to Bee County and went to one of the auctions and went to the general store there and talked to the uh, gentleman who runs the store about his honey. Uh, they, they have beehives and they um, harvest the honey. And so it's being a, an observer, I'm a pretty introverted person. And so it's very difficult with me. I, I've taken my husband along with me. He does a lot of the chatting for me, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but being uh, there to observe uh, is where a lot of it comes from. And a lot of reading, there's some really excellent books on the Amish faith um, that uh, I use in just doing a lot of research. I read the, the newspaper that they uh, have from their Amish scribes. Um, I subscribe to it and it is full of, of details and um, I can uh, get lots of story ideas from it too. That's awesome. And I think that it's, um, it's not surprising to me that it's heavily research-based for you because you are a journalist by training and you spend a lot yeah. of time in that space. And so that's great training for then coming along and taking a world that's not necessarily familiar and yet making it accurate and honoring the people right. who live in that space. So um, Mary said she likes how you shared once that sometimes characters and scenes come to you in the middle of the night. It's so true. As soon as yes. you want to go to bed, that's when they get yes. you know, noisy. And Lucy said, I'm so glad writing is your happy place because it shows that God wants you to use that gift to bless us. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. And then Lori said, I've really enjoyed your post and picture shared from your research trip. So that is a great way to let readers kind of come along and yeah. see how much we care as writers about what we're doing. So Allison asked a really interesting question. <laughs> if you could add a third genre, because you've got, you know, and no need for sleep anymore, yes. what would that genre be? Um, well, it's funny that she should ask that question because um, I've really... Um, been considering women's fiction uh, because I've had a lot of conversations with my editor about the fact that women's fiction that that some particularly the stories that I did in um, for Montana have um, those issues in it that typically you would see in women's fiction and, and it, it would be a natural extension of that um, and I'm not 
um, I have to work really hard at the romance aspect, especially in the Amish romances. You know, it's difficult for me. It's like something has to happen. What's going to, what is it that's going to happen? You know, and so the romance part of it is just more difficult for me to develop. And in women's fiction, that would be less of an issue. And so if I could write uh, women's fiction um, about relationships, but not, you know, there has to be this, they meet and there's, and it ends with this happily ever after, you know, three months later, it would be nice to not have to do that. <laughs> so I would say if I, if, you know, if the world allowed for it and I could write in a third one, it would be women's fiction. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. And sometimes those can be so beautifully done where there's the women's oh. fiction and then the romance is a more subtle thread. Like I think exactly of her books. Yeah. Um, um, so Mary wanted to know, has your family read your books and do they offer any ideas for storylines? Um, my mother and father both read them, which is really nice that, that I can feel good about that and feel comfortable that my yeah. parents are reading these books. Yeah. Um, my husband is not a, a big reader, but he did read the first romantic suspense book that I did, which was a huge thing because he's a photographer and he's a visual person and he does not, um, he reads computer manuals and things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my, I have a daughter-in-law who's reading the romantic suspense. Um, I don't know that my uh, family so much offers story ideas to me, but so much of what I write is drawn from the things, you know, I, I um, tease my son about uh, one of the novellas I wrote um, has a scene in it when, uh, where one of the boys uh, in, this, in this classroom takes the screws out of his desk and when the teacher walks by the desk falls apart. That's literally from my son's uh, grade school days. And we still have quite, uh, you know, he, he was quite um, mischievous is not, it's the word, that, the nice word that I'll use. <laughs> um, but he insists that that is the one thing he did not do that he got blamed for. Um, but um, I did use that in the story. So there are a lot of, you know, details that they'll, um, especially my, my daughter-in-law who's married to him will say, oh, that, that sounds familiar. <laughs> so yeah. Um, yeah, oh, that's fun. Yeah, because I think that there's, you know, like when it comes to reading, my daughters have read my books. My 13 year old right now has flown through a bunch of them. She was so upset when Lethal Intent came out. She's like, I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, yeah, well, your brother thinks I need to kill like 10 more people, including the heroine. You know? <laughs> and like, yeah. I don't think readers would like that. He's like, kill them all. Just get rid of the heroine. <laughs> It'll be great. You know, I think he would much more like the Nicholas Sparks kind of, you know, it's not a love, yeah. it's not a happily ever after, it's a love story. Yeah. And so yeah. like, you know, you've got to know your audience, bud. You got to know your audience. That's right. And so, but it is, it's just interesting how so much of just life comes into our writing and those moments yes. where I've had a friend text me and go I'm reading and um you know this is so much like you is this you something you do and I'm like well yeah there's a little bit of me in every book you know yes. and, and so just well, one, the, one of the challenges that I've uh, wrote that I've tried to really face um, as I've gotten older especially with the romantic suspense is that the heroines are actually at a, they're in their early 30s or late 20s they're millennials um, and so I have to write I, I, they're not me you know mm -hmm. I'm a grandmother and so I've really had to work on you know incorporating the lifestyle and ways of thinking about things that they would have that are not me and then <laughs> the one that I just turned the book that I just turned in the, one of the things that um, the heroine does to deal with her stress and the tragedy that she's faced in her life is is take a boxing and I am not a fan of boxing and I had I you know I, I actually looked at YouTube videos on learning how to box and did a lot of research about boxing so that she could box um, and my uh, editor said you know she said I couldn't tell that you didn't like boxing <laughs> so well good <laughs> <laughs> but you do, you know, there is some of you that comes through in, in the characters, but I've also written 
um, series with, you know, uh, I have an Amish Roman series with a, a newlywed, with a, a mother of six, with a grandmother and with a great grandmother and all of them uh, going through different seasons in their life. And, and so you, you need, you have, that's the, the beauty of fiction is you stepping in, into somebody's shoes that is completely different from you. It's so true. And that's where observing, paying attention to what's going on around you with the people you know, things like that. And mm -hmm. it just becomes really critical, which again, your journalism background would be yeah. so helpful for, because I mean, yeah. that's what you do as a journalist. So Joy said, my youngest has loved books that have both up and down and he's 13. So he doesn't necessarily think a sad ending, but joy and sorrow with adventure, which is yeah. definitely, they want the full range. It's just so funny though, sometimes what yeah. kids will say. So um, believe it or not, we're at half an hour already. So oh my goodness. Yeah, so it's amazing. Um, Linda says it would be difficult for me to write about something I didn't like. Yeah, it can be yes. a challenge. I remember writing a book where the heroine played baseball in the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, and I can't yeah. stand baseball. So that was I'm like, why can't she play football? I like football. <laughs> I definitely did not do that during the war. So uh, Mary's favorite book of yours is The Amish of Bee County, which I think oh. you were talking about the bead auction. So mm -hmm. was that research for Bee County? I'm sorry, what was the question? The, you were talking about, I think, the auction, the bee auction. Oh, yes. So was yes. That research? Yeah. Yes, that's I awesome. did go to the auction in, um, in Bee County and it was, and that's an option, that's an uh, opportunity to, to mingle and observe without being uh, intrusive because everybody's yeah. there. You know, and everybody's, uh, you know, you, they, they serve meals, you can buy meals and sit down and eat and um, you can sit on the bleachers during the auction and you get to see, um, uh, you know, all the little kids running around what and the details that you can learn from doing that with the, the kinds of clothes they're wearing what colors are is this particular community wearing, because um, it tends to vary what they find acceptable. What, what do their prayer coverings on their heads look like? What kind of buggies are they, um, are they driving? Uh, you get so much detail just by being there without actually having to insert yourself into their, uh, you know, be, that's the thing. I always wanted to be so careful not to, um, to overstep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, um, it's one of those challenges with research is yes. how do you do enough and how do you do it in a way that honors whoever you're exactly. writing about because it's their real experience um even when it's fictionalized completely fictionalized there's somebody who's lived what your character is and so you know hitting that right balance yeah. of getting the details right being honoring um and oh that's just it is it, it can be a real challenge but also i think what makes writing fun is i'm always learning i'm always stretching you can never oh, yeah. arrive it, you know, absolutely. we've looked at more than 30 books. I don't know about you. I still feel like a novice yeah. and like I'm still pushing and learning and growing and getting better as yeah, an author. Every time I get about halfway through, I think, what was I thinking? <laughs> you know, I just don't know if this, if this is going to be the one I don't finish. <laughs> yeah. And that never happens. <laughs> well, because then there's that deadline. And there's yes. that edit And going, then there's that there's deadline. That <laughs> yes, that's right. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight, Kelly. Thank and for those of you who turned in sometimes since the beginning, uh, just a reminder that right now, Lethal Intent and... <laughs> Uh, her book. I just book that's backwards. <laughs> yeah, her every move uh, are both on ebook sale right now for $1.99. So, some of you, your favorite books of hers are the romantic suspense. Um, if you haven't read her every move yet, you can get that now. Or if you've never tried her romantic suspense, um, this is a good opportunity to do that. And then her next Amish book is coming out in a couple weeks in July. So, yes. Thank you so much. Next week, uh, Ashley Clark, who is one of my sweet writing friends who writes dual time Southern fiction will be with us. And thank you again so much for joining us tonight, Kelly. Yes. Thank you. And thank you to all those who said, who were out there. I appreciate you stopping by. All right, thanks so much. Mm -hmm.